Hey everybody, let me know if you can hear me. I got a new um, microphone on and I want to make sure that I'm being heard. So I'm going to wait for a couple of people to log on here and uh, see where we go from here. Just give me a couple of seconds. Yeah. Yeah, can everybody um, hear me okay? I want to make sure I can do that. Okay. And I'm sharing it to... Um, it's... Um, get ready to share it to the church's um, page also. Um, if you give me just a second. I'll make sure I share that. Okay. And let me see. Don't want it there. So I'm trying to make sure I get uh, all bases covered. And um, good. I'm glad you can hear fine. Thank you. I uh, This will be my only post uh, about this. I, uh, I mean, I really didn't want to... Uh, make any kind of a, a post during the uh, election. So this would be, this would be it. This would be it before election. This would be all I'm going to uh, say about this. I think it's needed to be, uh, some things need to be said. Um, hopefully you can share this. I don't know. Um, I'm really nobody here, so I don't know if it'll go viral or anything, but there are some definitely some things I think that we need to um, talk about and I may need to address from a pastor's um, point of view and why we still have some more people logging on. I'm going to say that we'll have a live streaming sun, um, Sunday, this Sunday coming up, and then we'll be back in the sanctuary next Sunday where I'll pick up with our end time um, teaching that I was doing before. <clears throat> I've been um, here. We've been, um, as you know, COVID and flu season and stuff. We've been um, making sure that the building's disinfected. I've been cleaning all the doorknobs, the uh, um, uh, water fountains, all that stuff's been, been, been done. So we're, and I'm in the process of still doing some more. But we'll be back in, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Amen. And please remember to support your uh, church with your tithes and your offerings. Amen. That's the only reason why we're here is because of God and because your guys' faithfulness in, in giving and to keep everything open. But not this Sunday, but next Sunday we'll be back. And I have a lot of headlines and stuff, probably even more after the uh, election, about um, where we are in Scripture and what God is saying and what he is doing. Now... Uh, to get right down to the nitty gritty, I, I made some notes so I wouldn't ramble on this because I think it's very, very important. Um, again, this is going to be my only address on this subject before the election. So this is it. This is it. I didn't want to do this one. Um, Holy Spirit uh, was been working on me for a couple of weeks upon this. And I kept putting it off, kept putting it off. And so uh, uh, this is it. Um, I'm not going to try to insult anybody to oversimplify this topic. This is a um, complex topic. I understand this. So I'm not going to try to oversimplify it, but I am going to try to make it clear. Okay. I'm, try I'm trying to make it very, very clear. Uh, sometimes I take a little break from um, Facebook and everything else because it's, it's really uh, a terrible uh, with the way people are acting. And we're really on the verge of a lot of censorship, which uh, people's posting this time are getting censored or getting taken down, whether they're true or not. This is really a rough time. Now, for me to, to say this, now I, I'm going to say this clear, uh, whether you're on the right or you're on the left, or if you're a believer in um, Jesus Christ, I must, I must say this to you. This election is going to come to an end. The third is going to, is going to come, come to the end. We're going to figure out who the next president of the United States, States is. But one thing that won't come to an end are the things you guys are saying about each other on Facebook and the evilness that's been spewed about. That's always going to be on social media. And I needed to talk about that for a, 
a minute. I've I've seen a, a lot of unnecessary um, anger and hurt. I've seen families divided. I've seen a young man who just refuses to talk to his mom for and and she was a great mom who refuses to talk to his mother because of who she voted for last time. Now, how ridiculous is that? Um, I, I've seen uh, uh, Christian folks who've been, you know, they had those friend verses. You've been um, on Facebook, been friends for years, and all of a sudden we delete certain people uh, because there is no acceptance for diversity of thought. Um, I have a clear point of agenda, and I'm going to lay that out to you by the uh, time that this is over. But I, I must say this. We need to watch how we treat one another. We really do, because, like I said, after this is said and done and all the political ads are gone, whatever, you're going to be left with a bunch of hurt feelings, a bunch of people who really do love you, who, who you just cannot tolerate their different view, viewpoint. We have gone from trying to educate one another to trying to assassinate one another. And that ain't God. That, there's, there's nothing about that. That's that's Jesus. Now, let me just say this, too. I, I know this is a complicated issue, but let me say this. For all my saved people, if you're not saved, then this ain't going to mean anything to you. But all my saved people, we have a Savior. His name is Jesus. Amen. That is my thing. That is our Savior. Now, we know there's certain um, political things that are, that that are help uh, certain avenues and platforms will, will, will help in certain things of getting the gospel out. I understand all that. I'm not denying that. But Jesus is our Savior. Amen. Political parties have limited power to do what you think they can do. Uh, a political party is not going to come in there uh, on your on your sick bed and hold your hand. It's not going to come in there and get your son saved or your daughter saved. Only Jesus can do that. So my point of reference here, I have no hidden agenda. My agenda is clear. It is clear cut. And if you're a believer, your agenda should be clear cut. And listen to me. My agenda is to get the gospel out and get as many people saved as possible. Who becomes the president of the United States does not change that agenda. Who was president the last four, four years does not change my agenda as a Christian, as the gospel. There's certain, um, absolutely, there's certain programs and certain things that will make my job easier. I understand that. But... Listen, church, your agenda does not change based upon the Dow Jones. If the stock market's up or down, the agenda of the church does not change. If um, who's elected or not elected, who's marching in the street or looting, it does not change the agenda of the church. The church is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ and to um, go and preach to the captives and hope to set them um, free. But somewhere along the line, we've lost that, that we think that it is to beat up on our brothers, or our sisters. Listen, um, the other side of the aisle is not your enemy. My Bible tells me that the, that the enemy, the devil, is my enemy. We're all, we're all Americans. Uh, we all love this country. We have difference of opinions about how we want to get done what we want to get done. But you're not my enemy, and I'm certainly not not yours. I've never seen anyone won over to Christ by m making them look like a fool. I've never I've never experienced that. I never said, okay, I made you look like a fool, and everything you believe like a fool. So now come against Jesus. You cannot win your brother that way. You cannot. Some are saying, well, Pastor, you know, I just don't understand how people, if they're saved, can do X, Y, and Z. Listen, we are living in a sinful world. And it's up to us to be that example. I, I you know, I, I challenge all, all of my brothers and sisters, whether you're um, black, whether you're white, whether you're Indian, whether you're Asian, you know, um, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about that racism is sinful. It's a sin. It's in the Bible. It's a sin. Amen. But that doesn't mean that we um, listen. I've never seen in the history of time where alluding has caused a positive effect. I've never seen it. I've never seen looting cause a, a positive effect. i never seen calling names or making other people feel small change anything. But I have seen the love of Jesus Christ and I have seen peaceful demonstrations change laws and change hearts. Now, um, 
getting a one-liner in on one of your friends on Facebook to let them know how stupid their post is, it's not do anything. It's not making us the church. And I've seen some people who I've had friends on my Facebook for, for years and just make some comments and I just don't uh, reply back, but it kind of hurts my feelings a little bit to think, you know, that maybe some people maybe do, do think like that. But I, but I have to think the best of people. I know some people do stuff because they just don't know, you know, uh, or they just don't understand. But listen, the enemy, the devil is our enemy. And he loves to divide and conquer. And we have this great nation. We have this great nation. And I've said this for many years. Government, government is not your Messiah. Amen. Of course, I would like less government in our homes and more and more prayer, more scripture, whatever like this. But listen, we are the problem. We are the disease. Listen, uh, people, we are the sinful ones here on earth. And none of the legislation is going to change the hearts of men, but prayer will change the hearts of men. Jesus Christ would change the hearts of, of men. Right now, there's someone on here who just can't wait to, to, to put in some one line zinger about, oh, yeah, or whatever, you know. But you're missing the big picture. Because after, you know, after this Christmas is going to, going to come, we're going to talk about goodwill to, towards men and all this other stuff while we're tearing each, each other down. And everybody, and listen, I do believe in wearing your mask, wear your mask, keep yourself safe. But those same people that say that they're wearing a mask because they want to protect their fellow man. Christmas is coming. I hope you're volunteering. I hope you're helping financially. I hope it's not just it's just a piece of cloth. It's all you got to offer your, your fellow man between you and them. Amen. It's more than that. I mean, you can't say, well, I care about people, so I wear my mask. If you care about people, where are you when they need turkeys handed out? Where, where, you know, where are you when um, they need clothes, when children don't have anything for Christmas or they need, I mean, when you do this to the least of them, I mean, so let's keep that brotherly love going. If, if that's what you're professing, let's go ahead and profess it. Why does uh, churches have to struggle to get volunteers? When we get all these people who are on Facebook, just like, oh, this is the reason why I do this, because, you know, I'm a, I'm a good human being. I'm, well, where are you down deep in the, the trenches? Be one of those people. Be one of those people. Amen. Um, do what you profess that you're going going to do. Sometimes showing up is, is hard. Sometimes it's scary. But that's what Jesus would do. Amen. He would he would love us. You know, it doesn't mean that I agree with the, uh, a, a sin that people are advocating or that they're marching for. But I do believe in the salvation of the sinner. Do you hear me? I do believe in the salvation of the sinner. So I don't have to agree with you. My disagreement with you does not equate hate for you. I want you to hear this. Everybody needs to hear this because you disagree with someone doesn't mean that you hate someone. But we got this vernacular in our young uh, adults and our young people thinking, well, if you disagree with me, then you're 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 hating this or you're hating that. No, it's it's more than that. We disagree all the time, but we still love each other. Amen. And, re and respect each other. And we should try to educate. For example, how do you respond when someone has a diversity of thought to you? Do you listen? Do you try to discover why does that person think so so differently? Is there any merit to it? Or do you when someone thinks different to you, do you just have a tantrum? You get mad. You talk over them. You don't want to hear anything that they have to um, say. And there's no talk. There's nothing being being taught. Um, no one can sway each other, each other's opinions because everybody is so offended that you believe different. Now, listen, someone may believe totally different than, than I do. But I want to find out the reason why. Why does that make sense to them? And then maybe I could answer some questions that would unlock that, that would maybe make what I'm thinking making sense to them. But the devil, the real enemy, does not want the left talking to the right or the right talking to the left. They, they do not want us having um, legitimate dialogue. They don't want that. They want us to think each other are idiots. That each of us are like the devil incarnate and they do not want us to have a, a good conversation because we are more alike than we are different. We are more alike than we are different. But 
No one's having intelligent conversations. It's just name calling. It's just every everything else. And you can't. And I'm sorry. You can't um, blame that on uh, Congress. You can't blame it on the president. You can't blame. It. That's because none of them are in your house, putting their hand behind your neck and operating your mouth and make you say the things that you say. You have to take responsibility, people. We have to take responsibility for what we post. We have to take responsibility for what we say and how we belittle people. And if we care about people, we need to hold our brothers and sisters accountable. You know, sometimes we got to get on there and say, hey, man, you know, that was that was kind of a low blow right there. You know, that was that was kind of harsh. You knew she wasn't trying to say that. You knew they weren't trying to say that. And then cooler heads should should prevail. We should be able to do that. See, my job, my focus is I want to pastor everybody. Hey, Amen. I want to be an example for um, everybody. I want to pastor everybody. I want to love everybody. And I want to lead them into a, a biblical life. Uh, my standard bearer is the Bible. I believe what the Bible says. I try to live by it. I try to conduct my personal and public affairs. Um, I'm a sinner, so I know something about sin. Amen. I'm not, um, um, I'm not perfect in, in, in any means, and I, and I, I fail um, miserably all the time. But I, I tell you right now, I want, I want my heart to be right. Amen. And the way things are going and there's so much Bible prophecy being fulfilled that we've been talking about here at the worship center for the last uh, three or four weeks. And we'll, we'll bring it up again next Sunday that uh, if Jesus is really going to crack the, so the sky sometime soon to call us home, are you are you ready? Is your heart right with God? Is your heart right with God? Or is it filled up with more political hate and more hate towards your fellow fellow man? Because you think one race should do something or someone should do this or how dare they um, give a nod to this administration and that ministry. Is your heart right? I tell you, when Jesus cracks the sky or he calls the church home, you're not going to care about any of this. You're going to say, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. I want him to um, know that. I'm ready that I, I talk to those that were totally lost. I may totally disagree with them, but I talk to them and let them know that Jesus loves them. Because before I was a believer, I was his enemy. Listen to me. Before I was a believer in Jesus Christ, I was his enemy. I was antichrist in everything. Amen. I wasn't I wasn't about to get people saved. I was about to do what I wanted to do when I when I wanted to 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 do it. But what I have to give you today is today. I want to give you Jesus. Okay, now, now just just listen to the end, if, if, if you would. I mean, some of you might already turn me off, but listen to the end, if you could. I want to give you Jesus. If this book, the Bible, that I believe is the Word of God, is, is written, is, is so important and Holy Spirit inspired and then why wouldn't I want to give you the most important thing I have in my life? I want to give it to my kids. I want to give it to anybody I know. Because I believe the Bible is so true that it is the most valuable thing I have to give humanity. And that's God's word. None of when I pass, none of the accolades or the boards that I, that I served on or anything else I've done mean anything. I want to give Jesus for two reasons. One, because I believe it's true. And two, because I desperately love you. I don't care what walk or where you are on this aisle. I love you. The enemy wants you to think that the church hates homosexuals, that the church hates this, to hate that. Listen, I want you to be saved. I want you to know who Jesus is. Um, I know there's many people who could probably do what I do better. And, you know, God bless them. Have at it. But God has put me in this vineyard for a certain time to um, work with other ministers and other ministries. Um, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, he's born of a virgin. Amen. I want to tell you, I, I wholeheartedly want to work with you. Uh, we su support the gospel being being put out. I, I Right now, I, I so much want walls that separate the church to be nothing right now. To where we just give people Jesus. I don't care if you get Jesus from higher praise, if you get it from um, Calvary Cross Town or, or wherever you, the closest church is or whatever ministry is, but get Jesus. Get Jesus. Because 
today you need him. See, I'm coming off of the quarantine and everything, you know, so all the, the scaredness, all the badness they're talking about, the coronavirus, whatever, you know, we've walked through that. You know, I'm recovering from that. We walked through that. And I think if this is the baddest that they got, I mean, we're all, we're all talking about the coronavirus, we're all talking about the mask, you know, been, you know, hey, been there, done that. Been, been sick, been, been without, without strength. But yet, I, yet I'm still standing and God is still God. And before the coronavirus, in the middle of the, corona, uh, the coronavirus, and hear me talking to you after the coronavirus, I still want to give you Jesus. I still want to give you Jesus. I wish I could put my heart out and have him uh, pray, and I, and, and I wish I could take all your fear away so that you'd walk, church, so you would walk in victory. But listen, take care of yourself, do your PPE, whatever like this, but walk with God. If you're going through this and, and, and you have a bad, bad turn with the coronavirus and you don't know if, if they call you home is your, is your next thing, you want to have your heart right. You want to be prepared to see Jesus. Now, I'm going to do everything humanly possible that I, that I can here at the center. Like I said, I am personally um, scrubbing down stuff myself. That's what I've been here. I'm, per I'm purposely scrubbing down uh, and I'm going to go to the store to buy some more sanitizing stuff and I'm going to do the best I can, everything I can to do this because the gospel must be preached to all the earth. The gospel must go on. There is not an option in this. There's not an option. See, you're saying, well, pastor, what can I do to, to be saved? First of all, you have to make up your mind that Jesus is who he said he is. And you have to make up your mind that you understand that you are a sinner. See, I understand I'm a sinner. See, there ain't no, you know, there ain't no shame in my, in my game. I understand I was a sinner. Uh, I, you don't have enough time to run down all the sin and selfish things that I've, that I've done before I knew, knew Jesus. But I knew, but I know this for a fact that he loves me better than I love myself. And he's there for me every step of the way. And when I was sick, I couldn't even pray for myself because I had headaches, but I could pray for other people. I had a long list of people that I prayed for in our congregation that told me they were sick and that and that um, were having tests. And I still pray for them. I was able easier to pray for them than I was myself. So I know how prayer really works when you when you pray for for um, people. Me and my wife both had it. And I don't regret a thing. I don't regret a thing of preaching his, his word, getting it out there. Because the Bible says, if you did it to the least of them, you did it un, un, unto me. And I just want to say, and if God willing, I'll be here tomorrow cleaning up. If God willing, I'll be uh, coming to you live from the resource center. And God willing, next Sunday, I'll be here live at the church. I don't know who will be here. Maybe you just be me and my wife. I don't know, but I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to preach the gospel. And people say, why? Because you need to hear. People need to hear that there is a way because you turn on TV, everybody's fighting. When you thought people were your homie, you thought they, they, they loved you, brothers and sisters, they're fighting. Um, I see uh, a generational gaps where the younger people are disrespecting the older people. It's something awful. I, I see the gaps between um, a parents and their children and they don't want to have anything to do with because of what's going on socially but I'm here to tell you God has a way of mending broken things and he'll mend your heart now listen if you have not received Jesus Christ before and you're watching this live or you're gonna watch it on the rerun and I hope that you share this I hope you send it to uh, somebody you're not forgotten if you're homesick I know there's no visitation I know but you're not forgotten we we love you you know, we, 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 we miss you. You just can't be everywhere at, at every time. All of these pastors out here who are out here um, doing what they, what they can, they um, love you. They're in buildings by themselves. They're trying to make the budgets. They're trying to make anything. And let me tell you, coronavirus has blown up budgets. It has blown up ideas. We had so much I wanted to do in 2020 as far as our, our youth program, everything like that. But uh, I was enable we're still on track for the beginning of the next year but it all got blown up and it's no one's fault you know you and I we aren't the enemy to each other it is the enemy amen and let all heaven and earth pass away but not one dot or tittle from the word of God 
the word of God has been through pandemics. It's been it, it's been through um, plagues. It's it's been through kings and queens and everything else, and all those have come and gone. But the word of God is the same. If I die today, I want it to be what Bishop Russell says, one of my most productive days of getting the gospel out. So listen, if you have not received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, we're going to do that right now. I want you to bow your head and I want you to repeat after me. If you have never, ever given your life to Christ, this is your chance to give your life to Christ right now. Coming to Christ, it doesn't matter what political affiliation you are. It doesn't matter if you voted, if you didn't, didn't vote. Maybe you said, I've been an atheist, but now I know there's something out there. Whatever it is, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. Heavenly Father, repeat after me, say, Heavenly Father, I understand, say it, I understand I'm a sinner. And I understand that Jesus died on the cross for me. Come on, say it, I understand. I know it's hard to realize that, but I understand that Jesus died on the cross for me. That he died and he rose from the dead for me. I know he rose for me. And say, Holy Spirit, say, I give you me, live in me. And say, Holy Spirit, change my heart and change my mind for Jesus. Say, live in me, Holy Spirit, so I may live for you, God. All the days of my life. Go ahead. I'm waiting on you that I may live for you all the days of my life. I denounce my sin. Say it. I denounce my sin. I denounce the work of the enemy. And I believe today I am a believer and a Christian in Jesus Christ. Holy and righteous name. I pray. Amen. Listen. You have just been saved. Get you a Bible. Go to the book of John, which is a, a gospel, New Testament. Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John are the gospels, which means the good news of Jesus Christ. Go to, I recommend go to John. Read the book of John. Allow that word of God just to permeate you and go wherever you want then. And get into a church home. That's important. Darken a church door. Don't be one of these armchair Christians for the rest of your life. I know you're, you're, you're sick. You're shut in right now. But when you get the chance... Go share your faith. Tell somebody in your family, look, I just prayed with Pastor Ware and I got saved. Amen. We would love you to come to higher praise, but you don't have to. You can go wherever you want to go. But we would love it if you come here. But we're not the only we're not the only show, not a game in town. But I just want to tell you that go where you can get in. Listen, quit. Don't wait for people to sit there and have to call you to get back into to, to, to church. I mean, for one, it's taxing. You may fall between the cracks. We can't remember everybody. No church can remember everybody. Please take responsibility for yourself to get into a house of worship. Your church loves you. It has always loved you. The devil wants to make you believe that because you didn't get a call or they didn't read your mind that, you know, someone's forgot, but they didn't. God, we're here because God doesn't forget about us. God will never leave you and forsake you. You know, charge it to my head, not my heart, if if we miss something. But God loves you. This is a new beginning for you. You do not have to go into 2021 the way you came in to 2020, not, not sure, not what's going on. And listen, just as the election will end, so will this virus. It's going to end. It can't last forever. Only thing forever is Jesus. And this can't last forever. And we're about to get out there. And we're going to have to talk to one another, love one another. It's going to be a lot of, a lot of forgiving, saints, for some of the things I've seen that people have been, been said. And I try to keep out of those things. I'm not a, a, above it. You know, I'll um, state my opinion if I'm totally asked, you know, because uh, I'm not going to lie to anybody. But I'm not. But praise be to God, I'm not going to talk down to you, uh, anybody. I, I, I love everybody. We're a multicultural church. I, I love my white brothers and sisters. I love my black brothers and sisters. I love um all my minority brothers and sisters, I want us to look like heaven down here. I want us to look like heaven. And I want us to do it on purpose. And I want us to love each other on purpose. And I have some great friends here that you guys have been awesome. You've called about me. You've, you've helped me and my wife out. You helped the church. I got some other pastors who we call each other and they call and, and uh, check on me. I really do uh, appreciate uh, Pastor Jeremy Williams calling. He called, checked on me, asked how I'm doing. Um, um, I um, praise God for um, 
Pastor John Reynolds call uh, was checking was checking on me today to see how I was I was doing. I I, I, um, I appreciate him. Uh, um, I've talked with uh, Pastor um, Bishop Russell. Phil Russell would talk, uh, Pastor Dennis, um, um, Pastor Richard Sleet has called and checked up on, on me. We're praying for Pastor um, Tom, who's um, been in the hospital and he's been released. And I just want to think about all the, the brothers and sisters in Christ that have called and uh, Sarah and all of them who have called to, to check to see how we're um, doing and, and feeling. And I really believe in my heart that they really care and that they're really wanting to know um, how we're um, um, I'm doing. And thank you, uh, Bill. Stan, he's always he's always here for a, a good, encouraging word. You know, Pastor needs encouragement too. Just say, "Hey, Pastor, I love you." Pastor, doing a good job. All you have done that. I I, I don't want to call everybody's name. Um, some people have left stuff on my desk. Um, Ruth and uh, Hoover from down down south. I appreciate you guys. Um, it's a, a a blessing. We're not in this alone. Pastor Reno said this. You know, we're all in this together, and he is totally, totally, totally right. And we're in this to get as many people saved. I don't know how much time I got left. I just know I got more time behind me than I do ahead of me. So I want to do the best I can. We love you. Please come out. Please support your local churches. Uh, you know, those pastors that I named, you know, support their church. If you're part of their church, please financially continue to, to su support them. Continue to uh, uh, support us. Every little bit helps. Because we want to make sure that we're open, we're fully stocked, we're doing what we um, need to do. Um, um, Cross Point's doing an awesome job going out and still feeding people down down south. Support them also in their um, giving and, and and what they're they're doing. They're doing some awesome stuff for the Lord. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of churches doing awesome things for the for the Lord. So don't take it to me as co-signing or like I, I just don't know. Um, and I appreciate us. I appreciate the town that I that I live in. I love our community. I love what the people are are, are, are um, doing. And at the end of the day, we all come together, uh, from all of our farmers to everybody else, comes together to make sure everybody's taken taken care of. I love all you guys too. So, this is my final thing about this election. It will end. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for or how to vote. You know, uh, vote Jesus. Um, he is the Lord of Lord, King of, uh, King of Kings. But all you can do is guard your heart, what you say, what you do, how you think, and how you feel, and help somebody else with you. So today, it ain't going to cost you nothing to get online and text somebody and ask them, hey, I haven't seen you. How you feeling? It's not going to cost you a lot. It's not going to do a thing. Just go ahead. Check on each other, will you? Check on, check on each other. I don't have everybody's number. I would, but check on e each other. Let, it, let them know that you're being thought about. And I just want to say again that I love you. And will you pray for me? Because I am desperately praying for you. And I'm so blessed. And please share this. Will you please sh share this? And add your own little comments um, if they're positive. Please only share positive comments about how we're going to go forward with this and how the church is going to be the church. Again, our agenda is to get many people saved, is to preach the gospel. And there's nothing that the government can do to stop that. The government has locked down on, on Chinese people on China, and they still got the underground church going. They has a, a, a underground church that is just thriving in Iran. Our Persian brothers and sisters are carrying the, the gospel. Even when the government regime tries to stop it, if that happens here or whatever like this, the gospel is still going forth. Pray for the men and women of God who are on the front line. We are just as we are uh, frontline workers, just like your nurses and your hot and your nurses, your doctors, ambulance people, your pastors. They always go into those places, too, with with less coverage and everything else like that. So we am loving and I uh, appreciate you. And for all the higher praise people who are watching, I your, your pastor, love your pastor, your first lady loves you and we appreciate you. And um, we are more blessed than we deserve. So. Um, I'll see you guys on Sunday. I have a word for you. We're going to be doing it from, we're going to have worship and then I'm going to be bringing the word, but it's going to be uh, online. And then the Sunday after that, we'll be doing this live here. So God bless you guys. I'll see you.